To be or not to be, that is the question, isn't it? These words from Shakespeare's Hamlet also tell Air India's story. First, India's junior civil aviation minister, Hardeep Puri, said in parliament that the environment is not conducive for divestment of Air India in the immediate future. He said that in the current conditions, investors will not show interest. But the minister did not rule out divestment. Hardeep Puri even assured that the government will revisit the sale. Now, this message, this is message number one from the government. So divestment of Air India isn't on the cards, he said. But wait, the government then clarified the minister's statement, saying that the divestment is still on track and that the carrier is ready for sale. Here's the rationale for the shift in stance. The Modi government injected nearly 4,000 crore rupees into Air India in the last fiscal year alone. It also hived off some of the debt. So why this mixed messaging from the minister and the ministry, you may ask? The civil aviation spokesperson says that the minister referred to a report from last year. I don't know how that answers the question. But net-net, Air India divestment has faced a lot of hurdles. Last May, the government attempted to sell the debt-laden carrier, but there were no takers. Bidders said that the terms of the stake sale were not favourable. At the time, the government had said that they will return with an alternative proposal immediately. It has been more than a year now. The government must find a plan for the Air India stake sale. Because every day, Air India is bleeding. Let me give you some facts. Air India accounts for one-sixth, one-sixth, that's 17% of all the losses reported by central public sector enterprises as of two years ago. It is the third biggest loss-making public sector company in India. It is clear the Maharaja is a drag on the taxpayers' money. Auditors say that Air India's current liabilities exceed its assets by more than 38,000 crore rupees. Not just Air India, its subsidiaries are also loss-making. And Air India is not alone in this rut. Private airlines also incur huge losses in India. It seems that Indian airlines are bad businesses. There are several reasons for this and it's bizarre because passenger growth in India has been rapid. The number of flights has risen by 15 to 20 percent every year. Demand growth is very high and yet airlines in India are struggling to stay afloat. Generally, experts blame the situation uh, on external variables, things beyond their control. They say that when fuel prices go up, airlines suffer because India imposes a huge fuel tax on ATF air turbine fuel. When the rupee depreciates, the airlines face losses. These are factors, but they're only a part of the factors. There are other reasons. Successive governments in India have interfered in the aviation sector and policies are mired in confusion. There are many smaller towns that are being connected through airports right now, but the government wants to keep a low price cap. Is this even feasible? Why can market forces not control prices? Isn't that the idea of free market capitalism? And there is a chance, is there a chance rather, for the government to ease the burden on airlines. Airlines also have to cop some blame. In fact, Jet Airways is a case in point. Poor decisions, predatory pricing and weak acquisition strategy have all inflicted pain on one airline after another in India. Curbs on foreign investment have also taken the mickey out of the aviation industry. The inefficiencies in the sector run very deep. For instance, the government wants to raise 10,000 crore rupees from the stake sale. The government has transferred loans worth 29,000 crore rupees to an assets holding company. The total debt is 54,000 crore rupees and it could rise. This year alone, Air India is estimated to post losses of more than 7,500 crore rupees. That tells you a bit about the efficiency. If the government wants to sell Air India, then it must send the right message and it must sweeten the deal for the prospective bidders. When the entire aviation industry is struggling, why would anyone want to take over just the operations of an air carrier low on efficiency and high on debt? Divestment of Air India was a pole pitch of the BJP and Prime Minister Modi in 2014. And now, we're in 2019 and Modi is in his second term. It's time to pick a position and stick to it. In the US, they say that the best time to sell airline stocks is any time the market is open. In Air India's case, that theory looks applicable for selling stakes as well. A rather sad, sad state of affairs for a country which is one of the fastest growing aviation markets in the world. On that note, it's a wrap on this edition of India Watch. Thanks very much for joining us.